Hi, I'm Paul Lazarus, a member of FIRST's Executive Advisory Board and producer of the original Chairman's Award video project. By the way, you can see all the past Chairman's Award videos on YouTube. This DVD is an attempt to give FIRST teams some helpful guidelines and tips for making your own Chairman's Award video. If your team wins the National Chairman's Award, this video will be shown to over 25,000 people at FIRST Nationals. The purpose of this video is to celebrate FIRST's highest honor, the Chairman's Award. It is a celebration of your team, your sponsors, your mentors, and your school. Hopefully your video will help other teams understand what it takes to become a Chairman's Award winner. The Chairman's Award focuses on FIRST's core values, mentoring, helping others, building a team, corporate sponsorship, team spirit, gracious professionalism, and all of the great values that go into the FIRST culture. Try to make your video as high quality as possible. Best picture, best sound, no apologies. So when it's on the giant screen at Nationals, it'll put your team in the best possible light. And you'll be proud of all the hours you put in. Creating a theme. A theme will help you tie your entire video together with a memorable hook. Who's on? We're hot! Who's on? We're hot! You might use music as a jumping off point, a team motto, a team color, a movie. The point is to get creative. Past examples include Heroes, Miracles, The Matrix, Tie-Dye. These themes often came from a team's name, Heroes from the Hot Team, the Heroes of Tomorrow, Miracles from Team Mo, the Miracles of Engineering, Tie-Dye, Wild Stang's t-shirt design. Team 842, the Falcons, based their theme on a line from the movie The Matrix. There is no spoon. Try to incorporate your theme into all aspects of your video. Your theme can help you to select music, structure, and overall approach. It can be a source of humor, style, and impact. First. The answer is first. Rule number one, make sure your shot tells a story. The idea of telling a story with a shot is an important general concept. It seems obvious, but it's one we tend to forget. Plan the idea that you're trying to communicate visually. In other words, for example, I'm gonna make a shot about mentoring. How do I show a mentor working with a group of students? What's the best shot to do that? If you have that thought in your head, chances are you'll get a better shot. What's a master? A master is usually a wider shot that tells the whole story tells who's involved, where they are, and what they're doing, and what's great about it, hopefully. A medium doesn't tell the whole story. It tends to focus on one or two people doing that same activity. It's a slightly tighter shot. Then, of course, a close-up, by definition, is a detail of that story. Very, very important. We call it the eight-second rule. Whatever you're shooting at, Hold the shot for eight seconds. Don't zoom, <laughs> don't look at something else. Hold the shot for eight seconds. If you hold the shot for eight seconds, chances are we'll have a two or three second piece of that shot that works for the video. If you only hold it for three seconds, it's very unlikely that we'll have enough to edit. This, I can't stress this enough. Everything you shoot, hold longer than you think you need to and at least for eight seconds. When to use your tripod? Here's a kind of complicated uh, guideline, but one that I think works. If you're shooting an interview or a building or a large group of people that aren't moving or anything static, use your tripod, it'll help you. And the other thing is if you want a smooth pan, using your tripod will help. Basic moves of a camera are called pans and tilts. And whether you're on a tripod, doing it smoothly or you're doing it using a handheld technique. That's basically how you're moving a camera, panning and tilting. Here's what we'd like. Whenever you do a pan or a tilt, do it several times at different speeds. Do one that you think is fast, one that you think is medium, and one that you think is slow, repeating the same shot using those different speeds. Chances are one of them will work. In general, it's better if you frame your shot 
before you hit the red button and turn the camera on. So in other words, what we're asking for is find your subject, frame it, then turn the camera on. So you're not just endlessly keeping the camera rolling and throwing away tape. Find the shot that looks good to you, then turn the camera on. Use of the zoom button. Uh, if I had my druthers, I would take it off the camera. What I would prefer you to use the zoom for is to set up your shot, not shoot. In fact, I'd rather use the zoom when the camera's off. And once you've set up your shot, then turn the camera on. Try to avoid zooming when you're looking at the story you're trying to tell and shooting. It will help immeasurably in editing. So the basic rule is don't zoom while you're shooting. Zoom when you're looking for the shot. Where this is difficult is where you're capturing something documentary style and it's happening really fast. You can't always turn the camera off. Still, get your next shot, use your zoom, then stay on it for eight seconds, zoom again, stay on it for eight seconds. If you do that, we'll have a lot of good footage. Team t-shirts and uniforms and hats and logos are the stuff of the Chairman's Award video. If we just see a bunch of students building a robot, we don't know it's your team. And if you're trying to illustrate that teams are working together, then you need to have two sets of uniforms, your team's t-shirts and their team's t-shirts.